Hey guys, in today's video we're going to review a Boulder Safari GMT. As always, I'm going to give you all the positives and all the negatives on the watch as I find them. Now let's begin by talking about the specs. We have a 40mm diameter, the watch is about 48mm from one lock to another, it has a lug opening of 20mm and it's about 13mm thick. The case and the bracelet are both made out of stainless steel, crystal is made out of sapphire with some AR coating, water resistance 200 meters. This one is powered by the Seiko NH34 GMT automatic movement and it has a price of $647. Taking a closer look at the case finishes, as you can see, it's all sandblasted finish. I think this type of finish works well with this watch. As far as the execution of the finish, I think it's done pretty well. We can even see a little bit of chamfered edge on the case. Boulder did try to give this watch a bit of a visual interest. In terms of the case design, I think it's pretty safe in general. There's nothing really crazy, no crazy angles or anything like that. You have a crown at the three o'clock position. It's a screw down crown signed with the Boulder logo. Nice grip on this crown. It feels very good to screw and unscrew. The water resistance is, as I mentioned, 200 meters. Another element of the watch's design that helps with water resistance is the screw down case back. This one here is actually a see-through or a display case back with a sapphire crystal. There's a picture of an elephant on the back of my case back, which sort of defeats the purpose of a display case back because now you can't see the movement. Apparently these animals are randomized. I got an elephant, but maybe you'll get a lion or something else keeping up with the theme of a safari since this is sort of a safari watch and that's the whole kind of branding behind it. One thing about this case back that really stood out to me is that it kind of recesses into the case. Usually when the watch has a screw down case back, especially a display screw down case back, it protrudes quite a bit at the back and adds to the thickness of the watch. It also makes the watch wear a bit taller because there is a bigger distance between the wrist and the main portion of the case. This one here sort of recesses into the case almost. So the case back doesn't add too much of a thickness to the watch, which makes the watch wear much nicer on the wrist. I will demonstrate that in a few minutes here or so. But first let's talk about this bezel. It's an aluminum bezel insert. It's a fixed 24 hour GMT style bezel. This design element of course is very reminiscent of the Rolex Explorer 2 or a Tudor Black Bay Pro. When it comes to paying an homage to an iconic watch like Rolex Explorer 2, there are two ways you could choose to go about to accomplish that task. On one hand you could create a straight up copy. The other side of the coin is something that I think Boulder did here. You sort of pay homage to certain design elements like the bezel, like the polar white dial, like the pop of orange color, but you still add enough of the own character, enough of its own branding. So it's not exactly a copy, it's just an homage. Like for example, the dial here is slightly matte. That's how I would describe it. It's not a glossy dial like what you would find on the Rolex. Also this dial is a California dial, which means that the top half has Roman numerals and bottom half is executed with Arabic numerals. And then you have these hashes for the three and the nine o'clock positions. On some watches, this design element doesn't work at all. I think on this one here, Boulder actually pulled it off. The seconds hand, minutes hand and the hours hand are done in this sort of silver sandblasted almost finish to match the finish on the rest of the case. The GMT hand is done in this orange color, which gives a nice pop of orange on the dial. I actually think another pop of orange on the dial would be a pretty good idea. Maybe write that word safari there by the six o'clock position in orange, just to add another visually interesting element. All the hands and the indexes are loomed. Here's a loom shot for you. As you can see, the loom is actually pretty good. I also like the fact that the tip of the seconds hand is loomed. Speaking of the seconds hand, I also like how there is a counterbalance done in the shape of Boulder logo. It's a nice design touch. This GMT watch is powered by the Seiko NH34 GMT automatic movement. I've been really looking forward to some micro brands getting their hands on this movement. Ever since I reviewed the Seiko 5 GMT uh, about a year or a year and a half ago, I've been thinking what micro brands can do with this movement 
and bring down the price point of GMTs. Historically speaking, GMTs have been around $1,000, maybe a little bit over $1,000, and that's because there weren't too many movement choices. If you wanted a GMT, you had to go with something Swiss made, usually a little bit more expensive, which brought up the overall price of the watch. Thankfully, now we have Seiko and also Miyota, but that's a story for a different day. Create these sort of cheaper, reliable, solid GMT movements. So this one here is based on the Seiko NH35, NH34, a very legendary movement. It has 24 joules, beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and has a power reserve of 41 hours. These movements have been battle tested, so to speak, easy to service, easy to source parts for, and just in general, pretty solid, reliable, bulletproof movements. Now, in terms of the accuracy, they're not exactly the best. The stated accuracy is minus 20 to plus 40 seconds. This one here is plus 10, which is not fantastic, but it's actually not awful. So overall, not too bad. The watch comes on a stainless steel bracelet. The bracelet is finished with sandblasting, of course, to match the rest of the case. I also like how the bracelet is integrated into the watch. There is almost no gap between the bracelet and the watch, and overall it just sits pretty well. There is that first protruding male link, but I'm happy to say it doesn't protrude too much. As far as the rest of the bracelet, I like that these links are a little bit smaller than your standard links, which makes the watch a bit more comfortable on your wrist, it hugs the wrist nicer. The couple of letdowns that I have with the bracelet, number one, this clasp, nothing inherently wrong with the clasp, it gets the job done, it has the safety foldover mechanism with the Boulder logo, it also has a couple of buttons on each side for a release, and it's an engineered scissor clasp. Three micro adjustments, once again, nothing really wrong, it's just a bit boring. We've seen this clasp on so many watches, so I wish Boulder would do something different, something a little bit more unique with this clasp. The other part that I'm not so crazy on is the fact that this watch has push style pins. In this price point, I guess it's sort of forgivable, but still, I would love to see some screw in place pins. In my opinion, they're just a little bit easier to use. Also, they look a bit more refined. Here's a watch on my seven and a half inches wrist. I think overall it wears really well. 40 millimeter case diameter, no surprise here. It's sort of a standard sports watch territory. I think it doesn't have any weird, awkward pressure points. The crown doesn't dig into my wrist. The case and the bracelet proportions are great. Nothing really to complain about the fit. In fact, I really like how the watch sits flush to my wrist because there is no protruding case back. It just sits very nice and flat on the wrist. So overall, a comfortable watch. I think Boulder did a great job with this watch. It doesn't really do anything super exciting. It doesn't really make the watch stand out too much. It doesn't have any crazy features. It's just a good solid timepiece, has a good build quality, and it does what it needs to do. But those were just my opinions. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this Boulder Safari GMT. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Leave your thoughts. I always enjoy reading the comments. If you enjoyed this review, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.